Down at the market, my local farmer tells me how my food is grown and comes to me. Not far from the city, the farmer is my neighbor. The freshest food is grown locally. There's a party in the kitchen, something smells good. I wonder who the chef could be. It's the kids in the kitchen. Kids in the kitchen. Kids in the kitchen. Kids are in the kitchen cooking something yummy. Welcome to Kids in the Kitchen. I'm your host, Trisha Zima. In this season of Kids in the Kitchen, we've decided to concentrate on fresh. Fresh from local farmers, direct to our kitchen. The quicker you get food, the more nutritional value it has. So we want kids to understand the growing process. And we're also delighted to have Gabrielle Gatte, the French chef, join us to teach kids how to pick out the freshest fruits and vegetables. Today we've travelled out to Gateway Estate in the Yarra Valley, where Tony and Brett Sperling grow fresh capsicum, basil, strawberries and cattle. Join us as we explore this lovely 120 acre farm. But first it's a real pleasure to catch up with Gabrielle Gatte. Not long ago I was in the school and I asked the kids what was their favorite fruit and they told me strawberries. Now, I must say that strawberry for many years was my favorite fruit. Now it's not anymore, but it's still one of the ones that I love best. When you choose strawberries, uh, you want them to be very red. They must be ripe. If there is too much green, it's not good. They must smell good. They are so sweet. Those ones are so sweet. I want to eat them just like that. And they must not be blemished. Now, there's many ways to use strawberries. You can dip them in chocolate. You can just eat them like that. You can have them with strawberries and cream. But what I like to do is in the morning, as a treat, at the weekend, make some oatmeal pancakes, cut some slices of strawberries and put them on top of the pancakes. Sometimes I put a bit of strawberry and sometimes a bit of kiwi fruit. It is so good, it's a treat, it is strawberry. Hello, thank you for having me. Oh, welcome to Gatway Estate, Trisha. It's a pleasure having you here. Now we're looking at hydroponics today. Yes, we are. We're looking at hydroponic strawberries. And you have an absolutely magnificent store here as well with local produce. Oh, thank you very much. We're very proud of our little store here. We've got lots of local stuff. I'm looking forward to showing the kids around. Well, let's go. in the Yupik strawberry patch and these are grown hydroponically. That's right Tricia, here we are. Uh, we have about 6,000 strawberry plants in our little Yupik hydroponic strawberry patch here. Um, they're all grown in these little pots. Well, not so little. Uh, you can see each one has a dripper and the dripper supplies all the water and all the food that these strawberry plants need to grow and to grow beautiful strawberries. You can see the fresh buds coming through for the yep. next crop. Yes, yes, so that little flower there in another week or two will turn into a strawberry and about another two weeks after that it'll be full size and beautiful and red and sweet and ready to pick. And you can come any day and pick. Seven days a week, Tricia, that's right. That's just an absolutely fabulous thing and so close to Melbourne as well. About 40 minutes away with the new freeway, that's right. Now what types of sprays do you use? So we try and avoid using chemical sprays wherever we can and the main way that we do that is by introducing insect predators into the greenhouse. Um, in fact one of, the, one of the predators that we use is a tiny wasp, it's called Aphidius and uh, Aphidius takes care of the aphids in the greenhouse and what Aphidius does is we release them in egg form mm -hmm. and the eggs hatch out and then when, once the eggs have hatched out they'll go out looking for aphids and when they find them they'll sting them and then they'll lay their own eggs inside the aphid and you get a new wasp develop inside that aphid and when it's ready it'll nibble its way out of the aphid shell 
and go out looking for other aphids that it can sting. With the little wasps, they're, they're as I said, they're really tiny. They're mm. so small that their stingers are too small to puncture human skin. Oh, very good. But they're just the right size to puncture an aphid's skin. So the kids can pick it with ease and no, no they worries. They can without any worries, that's right. That's fantastic. Yes. How long from when you put in a little tiny strawberry to where it starts to bloom and give beautiful fresh fruit? Plant uh, strawberry runners, so we plant baby strawberry plants. Um, strawberry plants actually produce runners instead of so that, that's a runner there. Okay. So if you were to stick that in the ground, roots would develop out of that little node there and you would have a new plant. So we, from planting a new runner until uh, getting the first coloured fruit, the first harvestable fruit on the plant, it's normally about six weeks. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for showing me around. You're really welcome, Tricia. Well, we've had a lovely tour of Gateway Estate with Tony Sperling, who manages the hydroponic growing. Now we're going to meet up with Brett Sperling, who handles the farm gate and sales of all this beautiful local farm fresh produce. Yep. Oh, Brett, it's lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for having us. Lovely to meet you too, and welcome to Gateway Estate. Now, this is a beautiful farm gate. How Thank did you me. get started? Well, the farm gate actually started as our packing shed. So back in 2000, we built the greenhouse. This was our packing area. We were growing tomatoes at the time and we're busy packing away, learning how to grow. And once we felt like we had that under control, we opened the front doors up, put a tray of tomatoes across the front door. From that moment on, the whole shop has just evolved. Okay, we had customers coming in buying our tomatoes. Then we had local growers bringing their produce in, looking for an outlet to sell it. So we'd help support them and sell their produce. Then I had a mate with an apple farm, so we had apples from him. Um, and then we had the producers, the, the value-added producers, bringing their jams in, their pastas, their breads, and things like that. So it's been a lovely process where it's just grown over the years. We've been very customer-driven too, so we have customers telling us about great produce as well and, and trying to get us a source of stock it here in the shop. And I know people are going more and more toward organic and away from chemical within the growing process, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and certainly that's something we do ourselves here and we're very strong on that point with what we grow ourselves. What we source, we like to work with growers that we know and we know who do a good job. Not the ones who just spray chemicals randomly, the ones who care about what they're doing, care about the environment and care about the food they're giving to people. So we tend to work very closely with those sorts of growers um, to stock our shop. Mm. And you're just 30 minutes out from the southeast suburbs. It's so quick and convenient to get here. It's, it is. It's not far away at all. And it's amazing that how many people we have travel out from you know, the inner city just to shop with us on weekends and, and even through the week. Yeah. Well, we've had a lovely visit of the hydroponic area with your brother Tony. And we very much look forward to cooking with the beautiful food from here for the kids. Oh, I look forward to trying it. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs>